Okay, we are back. Um, so we have a special session happening now, um, which is the pitch sessions. Um, we also simultaneously have a uh, language lesson happening um, with the language Evo. So if you are interested in joining that, just click on the sessions tab in the left hand side. Maybe it's over there. Um, and you will be able to to join that. Um, and it'll be interactive and it should be some fun. But so yeah, what we're gonna do today is we have um, I think seven pitches happening um, and each each participant will have five minutes um, and then we will cut them off. Um, to share a product with you. So I will go ahead and bring out our first um, participant. All right. Hello, everyone. Just bear with me one second while I share my presentation. Okay. Then hi again, everyone. I'm TJ from Chatterbug, and we have been working on something pretty cool recently. And so that's what I'm about to pitch to you today. See, I've only got five minutes, so let's get straight into it. Introducing Chatterbug Streams. Now, I think there may be a handful of you who have already checked out or heard of the app, but for those of you who haven't, let me explain what it's all about. So Chatterbug Streams is a brand new standalone mobile app from Chatterbug. It allows users to view bite-sized language learning live streams right from the app or to watch them back whenever it suits. Each stream is led by one of our wonderful native speaking trainers and based on a unit from the existing Chatterbug curriculum from our core product. Um, the streams include interactive polls and real-time quizzes, as you can see on your screen now, um, about the language that you're, you're learning, uh, live vocab cards and pictures, and of course, what live streaming platform would be complete without emoji reactions. So all of this makes the streams experience fun, it's engaging, and above all, it's human. And so that brings me nicely on to why, to why we think this is valuable for language learners. Chatterbug's vision for language learning has always centered around human beings. We believe that the most effective way to learn a language is with those who speak them, real people. And if you've used the Chatterbug web app before, you'll know just how effective our one-on-one -on -one live lessons with our native speaking tutors are. Uh, but there's a problem, and you might know where I'm going with this already. It's scary. As a new or inexperienced language learner, the idea of speaking a new language to a stranger on the internet is pretty daunting. I would consider myself to be a relatively experienced language learner, and I still find that pretty scary. We see streams as the ideal middle ground here without the commitment of speaking to a tutor, but the learning still comes from interacting with a real human being and learning from them. None of the nuance of the language is lost as it sometimes is in other apps that rely on, for example, robot voices or just text on the screen. And stream serves this in bite-sized topic-based chunks. It's all really digestible, it's easily accessible, and everything is specifically designed for your level. So now for the businessy part of my pitch, um, aside from being an awesome language learning tool, as I've just explained, uh, Streams makes a lot of sense for us as a company and for the Chatterbug ecosystem. For starters, it's scalable. We can have thousands of viewers in each stream, and the more people that there are, the more interactive and the more immersive the experience is. Each stream is also saved to the app. So we're building this huge library of high quality language learning content. And we think this is super valuable. valuable. Gone are the days of diving down a YouTube rabbit hole, trying to find language learning content that's actually at your level. And we also see streams as the ideal entry point to our known and loved live lesson platform. There are loads of opportunities here for us to integrate these two products really tightly. So say you just watched a stream on going to the doctors in German, then maybe you want to practice this right afterwards with a tutor in a Chatterbug Live lesson. We think Streams is the ideal on-ramp into more advanced language learning in this way. It's the ideal confidence builder before getting into real one-on-one -on -one lessons. And once you're at that point, 
we just happen to have the ideal platform to do that too. So to round off my pitch, I'd like to invite all of you to try out Chatterbook Streams for yourself. Uh, we're currently running a closed beta program uh, where you can test the app for free. And you can find the app right now in the Google Play Store and the Apple App Store. I'll put these links in the chat afterwards. Um, all you need to do is download it to your device, enter the code, uh, the invite code, which is on the screen right now, it's join streams 2021. Um, and then you'll be able to set up your account or log in with your existing Chatterbook account. Please do note uh, that we're only offering German content right now, uh, and we will be sending feedback forms via email to all testers during the beta program, um, which will run till about mid-June. Um, so that's it. I hope you enjoyed my pitch. I hope you're excited about streams, um, and I will welcome your questions over in the main stage chat. I'll hang out there for a little bit. Thank you very much. And I'm live. Hope so. <laughs> Good afternoon already, everybody. Um, let me figure out how to share my screen. So um, yeah, Babel Live. Hopefully, you've heard about it already. Uh, but in case not, let me tell you a bit more about what are we doing. If there's one thing you remember, virtual classes that are here to inspire you on your language learning journey. Um, we have industry leading instructors. Uh, we have a huge availability of classes by level and topic, much more than just by the time of the day that suits you. And um, obviously we give you unlimited access to our self-study app, Babbel, the one that you probably know from before, uh, to make sure that we're completing your, your language learning journey. You might be thinking, great, another virtual group classes product, what is this about? Why is this new? Why should I care? Um, so I'm going to tell you the three things that we do differently, and hopefully this excites you enough to, to give it a try. We currently have a, a free trial ongoing that you, can, that you can tap into. We have, and I'm proud to say this, probably the best teachers out there. Um, not only because we, we, we find certified and, and very experienced teachers, but we find the most engaging ones, the ones that are really wanting to teach online not just getting getting used to this new this new reality they are true creators of social interaction in the in the class experience and they really know how to achieve conversation based learning we obviously all go into into tutoring or or individual group classes because we want to have that speaking practice but teaching through conversation is a different skill and we make sure that everyone in our, in our teacher pool is master at this. We also make sure that we're not just giving you access to some classes and that's it, or a class and a booking system and, and make that easy. But we really want to make sure that you're tapping into a learning ecosystem. Any learning that you're doing with Bubble Live is synced with our app resources. So, before and after your booked um, language class, you'll be seeing what um, Babel self-study app lessons and what review of vocabulary to do, whether you want to prepare in advance because you're organized or whether after the class you want to ensure that you make the most of the time uh, of the time invested and you review what, what you learned. We also make sure that we are providing you the friendliest of tech setups. We know this is, at best a pain and so we've made Babel live available in our app as well we you just need our Babel app whether that's on a, on a laptop on a tablet or on a smartphone and a zoom account and you're very much ready to go and finally this is a bit harder to grasp but uh, we put it very much front and center of what we're trying to do what we're trying to achieve how we judge if a class was top-notch and is the ability to both absorb and express culture while you're learning. For us, language learning is way more than simply um, accusative cases or, or um, gender declination of adjectives in, in a Roman's language. It's about developing curiosity for, for, the, for the culture that you're learning a language from and, and being able to generate identity as well with that foreign language. Uh, this is a, an important component of how we structure our class curriculum, how we 
uh, structure the, the conversation-based part of our classes. And we hope that when you're trying Bible Live, you also find it too. Other than that, I wanted to leave you as well with a quote of, of a user um, of a couple of months ago. Um, we've been, um, we actually keep a, a clear rating after every single class. And we're very happy to see that we're consistently staying over 4.5, even now after having rolled it out publicly and having thousands of users uh, using Babel Live worldwide. So that's it from my side. I hope you give it a try. Here's a URL where you can find the product. If not, ping me. Um, I'll be leaving it as well on the chat. And um, if you have any questions, uh, you have me through the day. There's another panel that I'll be uh, taking part on at 5.30. So drop me any message. Bye. Hi, everyone. I'm just going to get my screen share set up super quick. So hi, everyone. I'm here today to talk to you about Nowntown. It's an upbeat, quirky, research-backed language learning game set in virtual reality. We're currently in alpha and would love to make new partnerships and keep growing our community. Now, as we all know, immersion helps language learning most. It's why we encourage people to travel abroad and try living full-time in their target language. We always try to use any tool we can to learn, like video tutoring or flashcards, but that real immersion in travel is still held up as what helps language learning the most. But you know, hurdles come up. Money, visas, and of course, the odd earth-shattering global pandemic. Virtual reality allows us to still get many of the benefits of immersion and the motivational benefits of games too, but it's currently way underused. The market itself is growing exponentially, even during the coronavirus recession, and the question of whether it's here to stay has largely been settled by recent sales volumes. There's also a huge amount of growth in the education sector specifically. But the pool of software is still shallow, with not many VR games being available to the growing number of players. For language learning games in particular, this market is really underserved, with the existing options more so mimicking existing software rather than really taking advantage of the new platform, ending up more like VR flashcards. This is why we're building Nowtown. It's a VR town with fun characters, world building, and mini games that immerse learners. In it, you crash land on Nowtown and find that it's drained of color, with many of the citizens missing. As you learn words and pronounce them through mini games, you revive the town by filling objects with color and bringing new characters to life. We believe experiencing an exciting interactive town in virtual reality can fundamentally change how we self-learn languages. It allows us to get many of the research-backed benefits of immersion with the control and motivation gaming provides. Two of the big ones are it's contextual, so it gives you a richer web of memories to recall language from. For example, you go to a cafe and you learn the word for ice cream. Then you offer your octopus friend ice cream. Then he gets mad at you because he's actually lactose intolerant and just wanted a salad, just like real life. It's embodied also. So you're engaging your actual physical self in the virtual space while learning. You pick up and move objects wherever you like. You play physically active daily mini games to test your listening, reading, writing, pronunciation, recall in different forms. And you're led by interactions with the island's characters. You interact with pretty much all objects in fun ways, like you can throw a basketball and you can miss terribly if you're me, just like real life. And you can speak with characters, listen, you can make friends with a giant talking bottle of milk, again, just like real life, and many other sciencey things that we don't have time for, like the benefits of learning with 3D objects over pictures, the reduction of production anxiety, and we're very happy to talk about that with you further if you want. Um, now, it's also vital for us to kind of go beyond just memorization games and make a true video game with engaging characters, humor, fun activities, an enticing setting. Not only do these encourage people's intrinsic motivation to keep playing and learning, it also attracts players that didn't set out to learn a new language in the first place, but just wanted to try a fun new VR game. Currently, we're in an alpha build. We're open to new testers and community members and are growing rapidly as both language learners and normal VR gamers are excited to explore more. We have a demo launching in the next two weeks and an initial version this summer and a long-term roadmap of how we plan to keep building Nowntown. We hope we can stay connected with you all and are really happy to discuss collaboration and partnerships as well. You can find us on Twitter and Instagram at RealiaXR. Our site and mailing list is RealiaXR.com. And if you want to get in touch with me, just shoot an email to Camden at RealiaXR or shoot me a message uh, in the chat. And we also have a Discord if you use that, which we'd love for you to join. So thanks so much to Chatterbug for the time and excited to meet you all and hear the amazing presentations today. Oh, I'm up. <laughs>
Um, let me share my screen. Awesome. Well, uh, hi there. My name is Ethan. I am the CEO of Refold Languages. Uh, our mission at Refold is to demolish the language barrier. Uh, and what that means is that we are trying to make high level fluency a straightforward process so that anybody can do it. Um, so our philosophy is based on Stephen Krashen's model of language acquisition, um, which is the comprehensible input hypothesis. Um, he published this about 40 years ago, and the idea is relatively simple. The idea is that uh, you acquire a language, uh, you acquire the ability to speak a language when you understand messages in the language. Uh, and this is how we all acquired our, our native language, where we developed an intuitive understanding of the grammar and the vocabulary rather than studying flashcards uh, and grammar rules specifically. Um, and the conventional wisdom is that we lose this ability when we leave childhood. Um, but there have been many recorded cases of people uh, at adults, adults learning um, through this methodology. The most famous one is Steve Kaufman. I'm sure many are aware of him, but the one that I actually want to focus on is Stevie in the bottom right corner. Um, he actually learned Japanese um, and he passed the JLPT uh, N1, which is the highest level Japanese proficiency, proficiency test at 18 months. But he didn't actually try to speak until 21 months. Uh, and the first time that he tried to speak, he was already fluent in the language. Uh, and he has recorded all of this on YouTube. You can go and check out his channel and see uh, exactly how he went through the process uh, and see his first time speaking Japanese. Um, so we know that this is possible and that some people are managed to do it. Um, but it conflicts with the prevailing wisdom. Um, so the common sense is that you speak from day one and then you speak badly and then you get better over time. But the input hypothesis says that that's actually not necessary. Um, that if you just focus on comprehension and you learn how the language is actually spoken, then the first time you try and speak, you actually speak it correctly. Um, and that's how you develop the in, in intuition of the language. Um, and so the problem is, um, so, so why haven't more people taken on input as the primary method for learning? Uh, and the primary reason is that it takes a lot of time. Uh, so we estimate between 1,000 and 3,000 hours, depending on the language. Uh, and when we say immersion, uh, we talk about uh, TV, books, YouTube, et cetera. Uh, we're not referring to like going to a country and speaking a language there. Um, so if it takes this long, how do you keep someone focused on a language uh, for that long period of time? And the answer is uh, you make it fun. So if you convert your Netflix, Netflix binging and your Twitter scrolling, all of that over to a target language, you can easily rack up um, these thousands of hours of immersion. So that begs the question, um, how do you get somebody to the point where they can actually enjoy their immersion content? And that's what we are focused on. Um, because we feel that if you can get somebody to the point where they enjoy their immersion, then they will continue to do it of their own accord and they will continue to learn the language uh, and it will work great. So um, the way that we do that, um, we have five components. Four, the first four are here. The first is uh, we provide them a map uh, show them exactly how language uh, acquisition happens. The second is we give them a foundation. We give them uh, the vocabulary and grammar specifically necessary to start enjoying and understanding their immersion content. Um, we are collecting content from all over the web and organizing it by difficulty so that we can create content ladders uh, and give people content that is at their appropriate level. Uh, and the fourth is we are collecting tools from all over the web that help people learn directly from immersion. And the fifth, the most important, is our community. So we launched about four months ago, uh, and we have 7,500 learners in our community after those four months. Uh, there are 45 plus languages supported and 60 plus volunteers who are helping us to collect these resources and organize them. Um, and so these are a few of the things that our community uh, is reporting. Um, and they were not aware that these were going to be in the slides. They just said this in the community because they were excited about it. So. Here's a French learner who says, uh, they just experienced five minutes of understanding literally everything without subtitles. That was incredible. Spanish learner, I've been outputting on HelloTalk a lot lately, and in the past 24 hours, I've had four separate people tell me that I have the best Spanish they've seen so far in the app. Feels awesome to have all the immersion I've been putting in start to pay off. Russian learner, I talked to an italki teacher and was pretty motivated to see refold effects in action, even at such a low level. I'm starting to build an internal knowledge of how the language works without having studied it. Words were coming out of my mouth the whole time that I didn't even realize I knew. Uh, here's a German learner. Uh, you know it's a good sign when you stop translating sentences in your head and you just know the meaning. So if you're interested in learning more, um, you can uh, go to our website, refold.la. Uh, we have a guide up there. You can join our community. You can also find us on Twitter uh, or email me directly. So thank you so much for listening. And thanks for Chatterbug to, uh, for hosting. Hello, everyone.
My name is Brian and I am connecting from Dublin, Ireland. And I'm here today to let you know about the language exchange events that I've been organizing for the past nine years. Why? Because I believe we have a great solution for language learners looking to practice the language they're learning with native speakers. And the more people that know, the better. Before the pandemic, we welcomed tens of thousands of language learners to events in Dublin and Cork in Ireland and also did short stints in Rio de Janeiro and New York. Since the pandemic, we've set up online language exchange. It's common knowledge that conversations with native speakers greatly boost your language learning journey and help you reach your goals. But there are usually a lot of considerations, potential issues when going to set up a language exchange. Notably, who will I talk to? Where will I find the person? What time, what day, what platform, what structure will we use? What will we talk about? What happens if something awkward happens? What happens if someone says something inappropriate? What happens if I wanna to speak to more than one person? Lots of questions. Well, we offer you an opportunity to not have to think about a lot of these issues. At our events, you register, show up hassle-free. We organize multiple language partners. We set the day, the time, the platform. We have a structure that everyone benefits equally. We do the timing and the moving of participants during the event. And most importantly, we make sure it's a safe, supportive and encouraging environment. So how do our events work? You register on our website. We then email you a link to the event. Once you enter the event, you're greeted and then placed in small groups with native speakers of the language you're learning. You speak 10 minutes of your fluent language, then 10 minutes of your target language, then you move to a new group to meet different people. The duration of the event is one hour and 30 minutes. So the events are structured, they're dynamic, they're fun and great for meeting people. It really is a super opportunity to get more confident and comfortable speaking the language you're learning. Usually we have around 140 people at events each Monday, Wednesday, and Sunday. And we have people connecting from all over the world with a really wide range of languages. We usually have native speakers of English, Spanish, French, Portuguese, Italian, German, Japanese, Chinese, Arabic, Russian, Korean, and sometimes more, depending on who shows up. In our first year, we've had over 10,000 participants Yesterday was our first birthday. So our community is vibrant, friendly, supportive, lots of fun. And the vast majority of the participants attend four times or more. We have a really wide range of ages, and nationalities, and cultures. But at the end of the day, everyone is there for the same reason, to improve their language skills, meet new people, interesting conversations, and help each other. All levels are welcome, whether you're fluent or a beginner, you can benefit from the event. There's no evaluation, there's no pressure, mistakes are welcome, and we definitely aim for progress over perfection. At the moment, how we work is the first event is free, then after that, participants are asked to contribute. You decide the amount, there's no obligation, no set fee, so, guys, we have a really strong team working on this project that are passionate about language learning, events, meeting new people, technology, and good times. We've got big plans, and I would love for you to check out the event, check out our pages online, which I'm gonna share now, and get in touch. We've proved that this concept works online and offline, and I really do believe we're on to something special. So I'm just going to share here now, if I can, my uh, contact details. And I would love for anyone who is interested to get in touch. So thank you all very much for listening. And I hope you enjoy the rest of the conference and the day. And thank you to the organizers for a fantastic event. All the best. Hey, I guess I'm live. All right. Uh, let's see if I can share my screen here. All right. Hey, my name is Bill Roberts, and uh, I actually don't have a product to uh, to pitch you guys. Um, I do write at a Substack called Naturally Processed, 
Uh, you can find that at naturallyprocessed.substack.com, um, where I write about kind of ideas and in, in the language learning ecosystem uh, and future directions there. Um, and so here's an idea I, I've kind of been thinking about um, as I've sort of surveyed the landscape, which is that um, language learning apps uh, don't actually even speak a common language. Um, so uh, today I'm going to make three kind of like broad uh, statements, uh, three generalizations. I think they're probably not completely correct, but I think they are uh, generally generally correct. Uh, and if anyone takes any issues with these or has has exceptions, I'd, I'd love to hear from you uh, afterwards. The first is that language learning apps don't really communicate with each other. Uh, each kind of app is its own little walled garden. Um, and what happens in one app uh, is not really context or, or, or shared with other apps in a way that's that's useful for the for the learner. Um, the second is that many apps don't even communicate with the real world. So if a user is or, or a learner is learning language from Netflix, for example, or Spotify, um, most apps don't really know about that. They don't have any way to integrate with those platforms or, or observe the user's behavior on them and kind of make use of that in their in their own uh, you know application environment. Lastly, uh, despite these things, most apps actually share a core set of problems and data. They kind of reinvent the same wheels over and over again. And this kind of gives us hope that actually maybe something could be done uh, to solve this interoperability problem. Um, so uh, I'll now kind of go into a little bit more detail on each of these. Uh, you know, I, I think like most of these apps, uh, they, they, they do interesting things, right? They help us learn languages in, in kind of different and differentiated ways. Uh, but none of them allow us to export any of that context or any of our data from one app and, and import it into another one. Um, in, in general, they, you know, they don't even allow you to, say, export a CSV or, or a spreadsheet. Uh, and as a data person and a software person, this, this seems kind of crazy to me. Um, so if I spent four months using Babel uh, and then I want to switch to Chatterbug, uh, I basically have to go through Chatterbug's on-ramp uh, you know, assessment. There's no way I can export my context or my data from Babel and import it into Chatterbug such that Chatterbug could know, you know, uh, kind of where I was at in Babel. Uh, and this generally applies across the board. Uh, similarly, uh, if I'm using Babel or Busu or Rosetta Stone or Glossika or Chatterbug or Memrise or Drops or, you know, any of the other litany of apps out there, uh, and I happen to be watching Netflix or I happen to be reading my target language on Twitter, or maybe I'm reading Harry Potter on an ebook or watching TikTok videos in my target language. Um, for the most part, these apps have no idea what I'm doing on these other platforms. So there, there's very little sort of uh, you know, shared context um, and, and, and everything is just kind of in a silo. Now, there are some exceptions. I, I think these are some of the most exciting directions in, in language learning technology today. And I have these here in, in the bottom uh, left corner of the slide. Uh, these are browser extensions, um, Toucan and Fluent, that sort of harness your daily browsing context to, to teach you mostly vocabulary in a, in a foreign language through, through something I'm calling algorithmic code switching. Link uh, allows you to import uh, target language words into its environment. Uh, and Refold is not an app, but it is a method. And the folks over at Refold are, are doing a very similar thing to that of Link, but using open source tools like Anki. Um, but it's not it's not all bad, right? So, I mean, if you if you kind of think about how all these apps are designed or how they're implemented under the hood, they do a lot of the same things. So they have a sh very similar data model, right? They're representing words, they're representing phrases and sentences uh, in a bilingual context. They have some exercises. A lot of the exercises are pretty similar. They have some way of representing user skills over time. Most of them are doing something like spaced repetition. Um, and then they have some onboarding flow for kind of learning about, you know, how much a user knows or, or, or where a user's at in their education. Um, and I think that all of this is actually a, a huge asset. Like, you know, this, this means that there, there could be a shared common data model um, that we could design potentially as a, as a community or as an ecosystem that would allow this transfer of data and context between apps. Um, and I think, uh, you know, we should look for, for inspiration uh, for that data model in computational linguistics. So uh, CLDF, the Cross Linguistic Data Formats Project, is an effort to do this in the, in the context of computational linguistics. Um, it's not necessarily oriented towards second language acquisition, but I think it'd be a great place to start to, to start considering uh, open data standards. Similarly, I mean, we have these institutions that, that have kind of done this for assessment, right? They've, uh, they've defined standards uh, that, that are shared. Uh, so CEF 
ILR, I think, I'm <laughs> missing, missing a little bit of that, uh, and ILR, the Interagency Language Roundtable, you know, they define these tests and these standards that, uh, that help us understand kind of where we are in terms of our skills. Um, so, you know, the common data model is a start, uh, but it's not everything. Uh, you know, we would need to implement some kind of data infrastructure capable of syncing uh, the data uh, between apps. That's a little bit more complicated of a, of a problem, and, and we don't necessarily need to solve that problem up front. Uh, you know, we could allow apps to, to figure out the sync, uh, you know, on, on their own, but that, that is a problem that would eventually need to be solved. Um, yeah, so uh, this is this is my presentation, and uh, check me out at naturallyprocess.subsec.com. Thank you very much. Hey guys, hi everyone. Let me just um, quickly share my screen. So my name is uh, um, Simone, and I'm Italian. But as you can see, I live somewhere on the Alps uh, in uh, lovely Austria, where officially I work as a full-time project manager. In reality, I'm probably a full-time language learner, a full-time language enthusiast. I actually started quite late because I started learning um, languages when I first moved to Germany. This is Dusseldorf after university. And I started learning German. And now a few years later, I've been learning um, German and then Spanish and then French and then Russian. And I use all these languages on a daily basis to uh, work as a project manager and to negotiate with international customers. I've tried a lot of different methods, thousands of different language learning apps, thousands of different methods, uh, and I tried to learn languages in very different ways. I love to experiment. And I came to the conclusion that one of the best way to learn a language is through comprehensible input. If you are familiar with the theory of uh, Stephen Krashen, you know what I'm talking about, otherwise, uh, I think you can quickly Google it up. I will be real quick about it. I actually say thank you to Ethan that uh, a couple of uh, some, some 10, 15 minutes ago already introduced the idea. Um, comprehensible input is language input that can be understood by people that are listening to their target language, even when they don't understand all the words and all the structure of the language. So the language is a bit more complicated than your current level. These led me to the idea of starting my own podcast, which is called the Simple Italian Podcast, for everyone that wants to learn Italian with uh, the comprehensible input method. So I tend to speak uh, clearly and a bit slower, and I absolutely don't talk about language. I don't explain grammar. I don't talk about the Italian language, but I talk about interesting topics such as neuroscience, uh, psychology, language learning tips and tricks, uh, traveling and every now and then I even have some guests uh, over. Why simple Italian podcast? Well, we said because it is comprehensible, so it is easy to understand. It is interesting because if the content is not interesting, it doesn't really matter if you understand what I'm saying, it's just not going to stick. So interesting. And I explain, I do explain difficult words or idiomatic expressions. I would like people to listen to my podcast and to completely forget about the fact that they are learning the language, but uh, I would like you guys to concentrate on the content, so acquiring the language if we want to use uh, Krashen um, terminology. I also have a membership program for those who really want to boost their Italian language learning that provides you with the transcript, provides you with the new words explanation in Italian, as well as the translation in German and in English, a set of additional, ad, ad, <laughs> maybe additional, um, additional exercise that comes with every podcast and the explanation of why, because I believe that it is really important to learn why we are doing something. Why am I telling you to do this exercise and not this other one? So this is gonna raise language learning awareness. I want you guys to learn how to learn languages. So with the next language is gonna be even easier to learn because you know the principles, you know how to learn languages. So this is my podcast, Simone Pauls. You can find it on every single platform, on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and so on. I even created a very special coupon code if you are interested into the um, premium membership program, ChatterConf, um, you're going to get a 30% off. If you want to get in touch with me, you can find me on Instagram. And apart from the podcast, I 
run a couple of other language learning projects uh, every Thursday night at 7 p.m. Central European time. I run a completely free online language exchange event. So if after the conference you want to hang around with other uh, fellows, language learners and practice many different languages, you can find uh, the access on my website, simonepols.com. And I recently created also a YouTube channel in Italian where I talk about language learning. I share tips and strategies uh, about how to learn languages and my language learning experiments, I would say. So if you speak Italian or if you're learning the language, you can find me there as well. I think my time is almost over. So thank you guys. If you have any question, you are going to find me in the main chat. I'm going to hang around for a while. Thank you. Ciao. Amazing. Um... That was so great. Thank you to all of our participants who came and pitched um, their, their different language learning products. Um, I hope that some of you are signing up for some of these products. Um, and yeah, we'll see you back here in a couple of minutes for our next talk.